everybody. In today's video, I'm going to show you a 4D elephant with a trunk that kind of has a this motion going on to it. I first created this technique when I did my NTNA challenge for Koopa that was a mermaid theme, and the mermaid's tail did that. But because of the nature of the NTNA videos, I couldn't make a very detailed tutorial just on the happenings of that tail, and I really wanted to because it was just so cool and it took me, I don't know how many countless hours while I was lying awake at night trying to figure it out in my mind before I, able to, I was able to actually get it down. So I decided to do another thing with it and I think this elephant is a perfect little technique or you know idea for it. I hope you guys love it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. We're going to begin this adorable little elephant with a silver acrylic background. So this one isn't metallic, it's more of like a slightly shimmery, really, really shiny silver. And if you wanted it to be more contrasting compared to the elephant, then you'd want to go with a different color, obviously, than something that's really close to the gray of the elephant. But I wanted it to be a little bit glitzy in the background, but still kind of just disappear like this elephant is part of a herd. And so it's all kinds of different elephant, you know, heads and legs and trunks and ears in the background. And so then after that silver's on, we're going to encapsulate it with a layer of clear to make sure it stays as shiny as possible and then file the nail into the shape or into shape with your e-file. Also that layer of clear acrylic will help add a little bit of depth to make that background look like it is further away, especially once you apply some gel sealer. So now with a gray acrylic that is not metallic or shimmery but more of just a smooth color and I know mine looks a little bit like speckly that's because I mixed it myself and sometimes gray especially just doesn't mix into a smooth color it leaves that kind of a textured look like cement but it works out well so I've got the very basic shape of the elephant's head and now I'm going to be sculpting her ears on a nail form backing so I have two beads of that gray acrylic and I'm going to just gently form them into that shape of a classic elephant ear try to keep these incredibly thin because that well that gives you a couple different purposes one you can cut them if you need to which you'll see me do in a moment so if they are not quite right and they don't fit exactly up to her head you can trim them with a manicure scissors and that also gives it the very delicate skin like look of the elephant's ears so now that those ears are done i'm going to still work on my nail form backing and sculpt the trunk or not the trunk the tusks so we've got two white tusks with well white acrylic i'm going to keep pushing them in from side to side to give them a little bit more height you don't want them to be as paper thin as you wanted the ears to be so these you want to have a little bit more of a rounded shape on the top of them so just keep pushing them in from side to side and then as you can see my elephant ear just didn't quite fit as well as i'd like it to so i'm going to cut it a little bit and now it fits a bit better on the nail and i'm going to glue that in place we're going to kind of size up the other side cut it and then glue that in place on the other side too so there isn't, they don't fit like a puzzle piece together to the side of the head, but it's easy to fix that with some more clear or some more of the gray acrylic. So don't worry if they look like they're a little gappy like mine do. And then glue on those tusks as well. And now going back to that gray acrylic, we're going to fill in all of those little spaces. See, it just fills in super easy, but because they go as pretty close to the side of the head, you don't have that much space to fill in. So it's easy to, to make those little adjustments when you need to. I'm going to hold that one in place and kind of work on it. That one gave me a little bit more trouble than the first one, but it still worked out easy enough. And now I'm going to be adding the structure to the top of the ear where there is the actual bone in there. Now I'm going to do the other side or not bone, I guess. Is it bone? Is it cartilage? What is it? Anybody know? Yeah, see, sometimes I say these things and then I question myself. I don't think it's bone because there's no ear bone. It must be cartilage. Anywho, and then we're going to keep working on the elephant's skull and add a little bit more shape to the top of it. So that first little layer I placed down was just kind of a base so that when I did have those ears, I could start blending them in. But now that that base of the ear or the, you know, the ears are attached, you can start bringing this head out so it looks like it is forward from the ears and add all those other little details, add a little bit of skin that goes over the tusk on each side and then kind of build it up right to the part of the trunk that really becomes very soft and movable. So you want that like right between the tusks to be the end of where this is attached to the nail so that everything else is very wiggly and very fluid looking, which I know at this point you're like, how can you make a hard acrylic look fluid? But you'll see. Um, and if you guys, I know there were so many people that wanted to know more details in a more descriptive tutorial on when I made my mermaid tail for the NTNA challenge from Koopa back this, I think it was the end of April. Um, and so this is the same technique. So if you guys were one of those people that wanted to see how I did that a little bit, 
you know, more in depth, here we go. So now we're going to start sculpting that trunk. So we're going to place down gray acrylic on a nail form backing yet again, and we're going to press it in from side to side. And as you're pressing it in from side to side, kind of taper it down so that it's wider at the top and then narrower at the bottom. And then before this acrylic sets up, you're going to take a little exacto knife or a craft knife, dip it in some clear acrylic powder, and then start cutting your trunk into pieces. So first cut it down the center, almost all the way to the tip, but leave the bottom, the very like end of the trunk hole, and then cut those into sections. So after you cut it down the middle, then you cut it into several little pieces. Now on a silicone art mat, we're going to be painting a strip of gel top coat. And after that is cured, you can just peel it off. And then you have this very flexible membrane to put down the center of the trunk, trim the top edge of it. So it's nice and straight. You don't really have to worry about the other edges. I cut off the end right now, but that's going to get trimmed more later. But as you can see, it is super flexible. So now you've got all those little pieces of trunk and try to keep them lined up and organized so that they don't get out of order, but it's not easy. And if they do get a little bit out of order, it's not the end of the world, but we're going to glue each of those down onto the membrane. Now you can see, I left a small gap between each of those pieces of trunk. You don't want them to be right next to each other because they have to have some space between them to move and bend. And if they're right on top of each other and they're touching, there's going to be no movement to the trunk. So there's kind of a balance between placing them far enough away where you have a lot of movement, but close enough where it doesn't look like they're gappy, I guess you could say. And obviously they're going to look a little bit gappy, but you got to kind of find that balance. Once you have them glued onto the one side, then you need to pick this up and move on and glue them to the other side. And it's a little bit more difficult to glue them to the other side. And if you are wearing a pair of gloves like I am, Keep in mind that if you get nail glue on your gloves, your glove will stick. And I actually ended up with a little piece of blue um, glove in my end design, but it doesn't really show. And I was able to pop most of it off eventually. That's where it happened right there. You see that glued my glove. Yeah. Every time I do something like that, I just roll my eyes inwardly because I know that that's just the kind of thing that I tend to do. I glue myself to stuff all the time. Now we're going to glue that last piece that is divided in half and then cut off the end of that piece of gel polish and then glue that final little nub of the trunk where the, the prehensile tip is. And we're going to glue that to the end of that little bit of gel polish. And you can tell it's a really small thing. You're not gluing much together here. And so until you further secure this, it's very, very delicate. So keep that in mind as you're as you're working that you could easily break this at this particular stage. So then glue the top of the trunk to the nail so that it hooks up or it you know gets attached right between the tusks. And then after that, you can put away that nail glue and just be grateful that you're done with it. And now we're gonna start, like I said, smoothing out and really finishing up this this thing so that it isn't as fragile. But it's still really, I mean, this particular design is not something you're ever going to want to actually wear for any length of time. I mean, you know, a couple minutes for some photos or something, but that little gel membrane is very delicate. So if you did wanna do this and make it more durable, maybe use a piece of uh, gray ribbon. Like if you had some... Either like a curling ribbon would probably work really well if you had gray or silver curling ribbon. But if you're trying to keep this all nail products, then the gel polish does work as a delicate solution. So if you want to make it a little stronger, I would play around with different types of ribbon or um, even maybe paper would be more durable. But like I said, uh, it's a temporary solution, but it is one that works to use the gel polish. Plus then you can say you made it all out of nail products. And I personally find great pride in making ridiculous things out of solid nail products because you know, it's, it's fun. It's a challenge. So now after you have, and they're all kind of secured together, then you're going to go through and add a second layer of gray acrylic over the top of each of those trunk segments as they go down. And as you're doing that, and as they're setting up, you're going to take the very tip of your brush and make just a couple little lines going through it for the wrinkles in the trunk. Elephants are naturally very, very wrinkly. And so you want to make sure that you, you add that to this design and you can do it either with acrylic like I am and make it 3d wrinkles, or if you want to, and you'd rather do it with a paint product, then you could do it later too. So it's kind of up to you. I personally like to do a combination of both in a lot of my designs because both of them give their own effect that's really nice. So now with some diluted black acrylic, I'm going to go through and add a whole bunch of little details to this elephant. I have uh, drawn elephants many times with graphite. And so I feel like I have kind of a, I don't know, a pre, a predestined I don't know, knack with painting elephants and drawing them. So the key here with elephants is 
you guys see how much paint is on my brush? It is very little and it is very, very watered down. When you're using something that is so diluted, when your acrylic paint is so watered down and so diluted, you can get these little tiny hairlines and then you can add different layers to them and more and more depth. And so the first set of lines I did is really light, as you can see in the ears, it's very pale. And then the more color you add, the deeper those lines get. So you can add some really nice different layers to a gray, especially since this is a monochrome design, you want to have a lot of depth and a lot of highlights and make it really dramatic that way. You're going to need to add in your elephant's eyes and then a couple highlights here and there. And again, this is diluted paint. So this is diluted white paint for adding these highlights and just sort of add them everywhere. Use a little bit of paint on the brush and kind of go crazy with it. Add a lot of little lines. Once you're done with all that painting, then you can apply a layer of gel sealer to the background and cure it. And then some matte top coat over your elephant. Make sure that you apply a very light layer of matte top coat so it doesn't interfere with the movement of that trunk. And then you get to have some fun with this. This design and like any of them that I've done that have some crazy movement are just some of my favorites. I hope you love it as much as I do. And if you do give it a try, please share any recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram because I always get such a kick out of it when I get to see your guys' work too. And I will see you next time. Bye.